Hello, I'm very glad to be here with you again. Uh, uh, our topic today is the uh, study of Tompkins about the impediments uh, to uh, freedom from our emotions and uh, uh, an ability of controlling them. Because in an ideal way, we can know our emotions and according to Brian Lynch, define the emotional problem we are going through and evaluate the causes of the problem, see what we can do about it and then solve the emotional problem. Uh, that is uh, the best way to deal with our emotions and to match emotions and reason, right? We are not always able to do that. Something, uh, sometimes, pardon, uh, violence can turn on uh, uh, catastrophe and we are not able to have constructive conflict. We are overwhelmed, uh, depressed, distressed, disgusted, dismayed, ashamed, and stuck uh, with those feelings. But let's see what causes that emotional conflict and why they are an impediment to freedom. How can effects be an impediment to freedom? So. Negative effect, according to Tompkins, is a transitory state, a problem to be solved. They, 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 they are negative effects, a lot of them. Uh, shame, dismay, disgust, fear, distress, anguish, fear, terror, uh, and so on. Uh, but, uh, uh, and usually, uh, those effects uh, that can uh, lead us to aggression are inhibited by fear. Uh, general interest and curiosity, for instance, can be inhibited by overprotective parents who out of fear for the safety of their child discourage the child exploration by frightening them into passivity. Uh, or the childish expression of joy is high in decibel value and as such annoying to the child. An aggressive parent may frighten the child out of expressing joy by a slap on the face or a threat of physical punishment. So we can inhibit uh, positive effects that lead us to freedom such as interest and joy. Uh, because uh, joy and excitement provide re rewards, according to, to Tompkins, that enable human beings to counteract fear, distress, and shame. So, since the former positive effects are activated by any sudden reduction of the negative effects, one can learn to regard negative effects as a transitory state, a problem to be solved. But uh, we are not always able to solve those problems because of this inhibition. And uh, in that way, memory and faults are a restriction to freedom. Because our memories, our faults uh, of uh, inhibition, inhibition of uh, you're not able to do that, what is shameful to do that, uh, that um, uh, function as an impediment to our free will, uh, they can come back. And uh, Tompkins describes that the memory of the past experience of a fact with respect to any object which has been linked with that effect, make the individual the slave of his own construction. So we, we can observe that if a parent said to a kid, you're not able to do that alone, you need me to decide what to do, you're not able to do it by yourself, then the kid can create fear and dependency of this parent. And don't allow himself to dare 
to think by himself and to take his own decisions in life. And he is always looking for an external judgment. So, uh, Tompkins continues, the vividness of past affective experience constrains and pushes the imagination in a way which reduces the degree of freedom. So we can be dependent of a parent, of a husband, of a, a, an external approval. And um, it can be a father, a mother, um, a, a, a friend, but someone that is always pushing us uh, uh, on the past affective uh, uh, experiences uh, that constrains us, reminding us that we are not able to be free, that we are not able to take our own decisions, that we are not able to live our own life by ourselves, that we are not able to solve such, some emotional problems without this kind of help and so on. So, uh, in the structure of the effect system, faults and memory can be a restriction to freedom. And that's not all. <laughs> Tompkins criticized uh, the theory of pride, uh, the sublimation theory, and says, in, in fact, we don't sublimate, we substitute the dependency of an object to another object. And that's very interesting and wise, even if it criticized the psycho psychoanalytic theory. Because he said, uh, human beings can become addicted to specific satisfiers, either in the case of drive or affect, and substitutability of objects declines. We, we cannot substitute those objects. We create a, an addiction to those objects. And uh, he, he, he said quite provocatively that uh, uh, a lover may find there is no love uh, object than the beloved a friend that there is no other friend quite like his oldest friend, a child that there is no substitute to mothers and fathers. And in the case of this mother and father, a, a, a love be, loving, uh, shows solidarity, compassion, uh, are fair people that helps us to go on. This is, well, it's normal to be in love with them, but in the case that is destructive person that had uh, an influence uh, that uh, impedes freedom uh, for the kid or for the beloved, uh, jealous, violent husband, uh, aggressive uh, wife, uh, uh, and so on, um, you must uh, in a way, uh, try to separate from these people to reach some freedom, right? And uh, then I understood something very important while I was reading Tompkins. I understood the connection between freedom and detachment, love and addiction. and. Uh, uh, there is uh, uh, a need for the other sometimes, uh, like a plant seeks for water and sunlight. And uh, I, if we substitute this love, this passion for art, for instance, we can create a new addiction, according to Tompkins, because if we are compulsive in our love relationship, we can very well be compulsive with art, with uh, with music, with uh, whatever activity. We can turn a workaholic, we can, we can turn a sport addict, and we are not really sublimating. We are creating a new addiction. If, for instance, in the religious field, and that's very 
often that happens. I substitute the love uh, of someone by the fear of God. I'm, I'm still in a dependent uh, relationship to the others or to an entity that frightens me and don't allows me to develop. So <laughs> detachment is here a key for freedom because uh, uh, detachment uh, is a way to choose uh, with whom and how to relate every day. Uh, if we have a, a, an addiction on smoking, drinking, or being dependent of someone's approval, uh, we have to learn to detach from this person in a way that not uh, choosing to substituting this person or this addiction to something else, uh, but to behave as subject, facing other subjects, and uh, uh, in, in a way to, to, to control our relationships. And uh, I would I say some... Uh, Thing I, I thought very deeply, we, we should build slowly trust in results uh, produced by ourselves in our inner capacities due to the good and fair uh, results produced by those actions based on human rights for and with the others and not because of an external and based judgment. I'm, I repeat myself. We should build slowly trust in ourselves and this trust in ourselves uh, we, we can build it uh, uh, because we have our inner capacities we can confirm us this inner capacities through the good and fair results produced by our actions based on human rights for and with the others and not because of an external and based judgment. So freedom is achieved uh, because we learn to detach from the objects we are dependent on and relate in between subjects, choosing rationally the way we are going to relate and why we are going to relate and the purpose of this relationship and this relationship must be a, a, a relationship that help us to grow to evolve together in a cooperation mode and not a relationship that pushes us down and is an impediment to our freedom to our free will that is an emotional dependency addiction to, to someone or to something. And there, Tompkins were very, very precise and interesting because he said, hey, take care. Sometimes you are, you are not sublimating, you are not reaching a sublime level of development. You're only substituting a dependency by another dependency. You're not in love with someone anymore, but you fear God and you related to God as a, 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 a guru or some, some entity that uh, brainwashes <laughs> your decisions. So that's not really what we seek when we try to have a inner uh, evolution. What we seek is to develop trust, trust in ourselves, trust in the others through our actions based on human rights. And that is very different to be dependent on an external and based judgment. Thank you for your attention and sorry for the mistakes. I'm improving my English. <laughs> I'll try to do best. <laughs> the next time.